The day we're taking a look at these MLB matches, Minnesota Twins vs. Chicago White Sox, Cleveland Indians vs. Houston Astros and San Francisco Giants vs. Los Angeles Dodgers, which are happening on Wednesday, July 21, 2021, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. 5 plans are available for each and every one of you, you can get 30 extra betting picks all the way up to 270 extra betting picks per month. Stop wasting hours and hours of your time searching the internet for some fake betting predictions and losing your money because of it. Join High Stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks and advices instantly. The Twins led a chance to sweep the doubleheader Monday slip away as their ace faltered with the game on the line late. That doesn't bode well for Minnesota's chances here, as Pineda hasn't overwhelmed anyone this season and has pitched just once in the majors since mid-June. Cease has struggled against the Twins in his career, but the White Sox are more than capable of papering over any damage he allows, thanks to their offense. In addition, Cease has pitched well at home this year, and he has electric stuff that can be tough for a hitter to catch up to, much less guess what pitch may be coming. The White Sox are the better team in that, plus home field advantage. Michael Pineda had his worst game of the season in his last start, which was against the Chicago White Sox. He went 5.1 innings and gave up 12 hits, 0 walks, 5 earned runs, and struck out 4 in a loss. On the season, Pineda has a record of 3-5 and 12 starts with a 4.11 ERA, 1.24 whip, and a 55-15 KBB ratio. Opposing batters are hitting .257 against Pineda this season. He has gone six innings or more in four games. Pineda pitched against the White Sox one other time this season. He went 5.1 innings and gave up four hits, three walks, three earned runs, and struck out seven in a loss. The Twins pitching staff has been terrible this season. As a team, they are bottom five in ERA, hits allowed, runs allowed, home runs allowed, and batting average against. Minnesota has been good on offense this season. They are top 10 in the league in hits, home runs, SLG, and ops. They are just outside the top 10 in runs, RBIs, walks, batting average, and OBP. Nelson Cruz is having a good season. He leads the team in hits, home runs, RBIs, and has a batting average over .300. The Twins have six batters with double-digit home runs on the season. Poor pitching has hurt the Twins this season, and they will not make the playoffs because of it. Chicago earned a walk-off win in the nightcap of their doubleheader Monday to get a split. The White Sox entered Tuesday with an 8.5 game lead over the Indians in the Isle Central race. In the opening game of the doubleheader, the team had just four hits with Tim Anderson, two runs, RBI, hitting his ninth homer of the season in a losing effort. Lance Lynn didn't factor in the decision as he threw seven innings, allowing one run on five hits with one walk and four strikeouts. Gary Crochet, 2-5, took the loss as he allowed two runs, one earned, on one hit with no walks and one strikeout in one-third of an inning. The nightcap saw the White Sox record only four hits, though three left the yard. Jose Abreu, his 17th, Yon Moncada, his 7th, and Gavin Sheets, his 5th, each went deep with Sheets homer a three-run walk-off shot in the 7th inning. Rodrigo Lopez didn't factor in the decision as he threw three innings, allowing two runs, one earned, on two hits with one walk and three strikeouts. Aaron Bummer, 2-4, threw a scoreless seventh, allowing no hits or walks, while striking out one, for the win. Dylan Cease is on the mound for the White Sox, as he makes his 20th start of the season in this contest. He comes in 7-5 with a 4.15 ERA, a 1.28 whip, 41 walks and 127 strikeouts over 97.2 innings of work on the year. Cease took the loss in his last start, which came Friday on the road against the Astros. He threw 5.2 innings, allowing three runs on six hits with two walks and 10 strikeouts, in a 7-1 Chicago defeat. Pitching at home this season, Cease is 4-1 with a 2.15 ERA, a 1.093 whip, 19 walks and 67 strikeouts over 50.1 innings and 9 starts. Cease makes his 7th career start against the Twins in this contest. He comes in 1-3 with an 8.04 ERA, a 1.857 whip, 16 walks and 33 strikeouts over 28 innings of work against them. 
Cs is 8.6 with a 3.86 ERA, a 1.422 whip, 61 walks, and 122 strikeouts, over 109.2 innings of action and 21 career starts at guaranteed rate field. My betting advice for that game is to pick Chicago White Sox. This looks like a good spot to take the Tribe. Not only is McCullers Jr. laying a ton of juice in this game, but he's also a candidate for some regression in the second half. On the other hand, Morgan owns an ugly ERA despite some strong peripherals, so it wouldn't surprise me to see him have some better luck moving forward as well. This could be a good spot for that to happen, especially after Houston totaled only five runs combined in its first three contests since the All-Star break. The Cleveland Indians have been in playoff contention this season in large part because of their pitching staff. Unfortunately, the staff is dealing with injuries at moment and will have to start Eli Morgan as a result. Morgan has only started six games this season but is allowed 23 runs while only tossing 28 strikeouts in the process. The hope is that Morgan can have a great start considering the offense has struggled this season, scoring 4.32 runs per game. Ozair Ramirez leads the team with 19 home runs and a .341 on-base percentage, while Franmil Reyes has 16 home runs and a .601 slugging percentage, but the rest of the lineup has struggled this season. Only four batters have hit 10 home runs or more on the season, and only three batters possess an ops plus of 100 or higher, indicating that the back half of the order has been a liability for the team. Houston is scheduled to counter with right-hander Lance McCullers Jr., who will try to continue his breakout season. The 27-year-old has allowed three earned runs or fewer in 14 of his first 15 starts, and he's pitched into the sixth inning or later in each of his previous five outings. McCullers Jr. is fresh off of back-to-back -back seven inning gems against the Chicago White Sox and Oakland A's. He struck out a season-high 10 batters in his last start versus the White Sox, allowing just one run in seven innings of work to escape with a win. He comes in with a 7-2 record and a 2.80 ERA. McCullers Jr. could be a candidate for regression in the second half. While he's still striking out hitters at a higher rate, 10.28 K9, the Astros' right-hander has also issued his fair share of free passes this year. McCullers Jr. has walked 4.47 batters per nine innings of work and has benefited from a low BAB of 0.255 and high strand rate, 80.1%, so far this year. He will take the mound at Minute Maid Park in search of some better results versus the Indians. The Astros' righty is 2-2 with a 5.82 ERA and four career starts against the Tribe. Yet, he seems primed for success on Wednesday. Per baseball savant, current Indians hitters are batting .222 in 43 plate appearances off of him ahead of Wednesday's matchup. My betting advice for that game is to pick Cleveland plus 205. Julio Urias hasn't been at his best last time out, allowing four earned runs on seven hits against the Rockies at Coors Field, but he's still emerged victorious as the Dodgers have scored 10 runs. Urias often gets solid run support, and I'm expecting more of the same in this one. The Dodgers struggled to hit well against Logan Webb in May and will look to bounce back this time. They've been killing it at the plate as of late, while Webb is 1-2 with a 4.34 ERA and four career starts against the Dodgers. The San Francisco Giants improved to 59-34 on the season following that 7-2 victory at Dodger Stadium. That's the best record in the majors, as the Giants are looking to stay ahead of the Dodgers and Padres and avoid the wild card round. There's still plenty of games to be played, and San Francisco really looks good on both sides of the ball. The Giants are scoring 4.91 runs per game, sixth in the majors, while yielding just 3.59 in a return, first. They've recorded an excellent 0.271.355.458 slash line in July to go with a sharp 3.29 ERA. The Dodgers followed up their four-game winning streak by losing their last two games, which has dropped them two games behind the Giants in the NL West standings. They will try to make up some ground in the standings with a win over the Giants, which will give them their fifth win in their last seven games. Los Angeles is averaging 5.28 runs per game. Their .245 batting average is 10th in the league. Their .338 on base percentage is 3rd, while their .424 slugging percentage is 8. Justin Turner leads Los Angeles with a .304 batting average, while Max Muncy leads the team with 22 home runs and 58 RBI. Los Angeles's pitching is one of the best in the league. 
opponents have a .214 batting average against the Dodgers, which is second in the league. Their 3.180 RA is first, while their 1.13 whip is second. In his last start, Urias gave up seven hits and four runs in 5.2 innings, leading to a 10-4 win over Colorado. They will need a better performance from him if they want to win this game. The Giants are averaging 4.91 runs per game, but their average drops to 4.80 runs per game on the road. They average 3.33 runs per game in their last three games against the Dodgers. With the Dodgers are giving up 3.38 runs per game at home, the Giants will be held under their average in this game. The Dodgers are averaging 5.28 runs per game and 5.27 runs per game at home. They average 2.67 runs per game in their last three games against the Giants. With San Francisco giving up 3.38 runs per game on the road, the Dodgers won't score enough runs to push the score over the total. The Dodgers and Giants played under the total in two of their last three meetings. My betting advice for that game is to pick over 8.5. Good luck to all of you. That's it for this video. Stay tuned and stay safe for the next betting tips and advice.